Inspired Evolution, and it is a treat. A treat, one treat, two treat, a double treat to be actually maybe one and one and not two, and they're actually 11. It's such a treat to be here today. We have with us Juanpa and Regan. How are you guys? We're so good. So We're good. so happy grateful. to be here. Yes. So great. Such, such a pleasure to have you both here. We've had them both on before individually, Regan herself and Juanpa. For those tuning into them for the first time, just give me a second to do the honors. Uh, really succinctly, Regan is a serial entrepreneur, philanthropist, international speaker, and a mindset coach. And Juanpa, international speaker, transformational leader, healer, and coach as well. And he's the founder of the director of uh, Conscious Living School. But Regan and Juanpa don't just say, share common paths. They also share a life path, a conscious path of love together. And they teach and share all around the world around divine union and soulful relationships. But even deeper than that is the embodiment, right, that they exhibit of their divine union and soulful relationships, guys. It's been truly inspirational following your journey, being part of your journey. And just, yeah, I guess the embodiment, the way you show up is beyond inspiring. <laughs> and it's just really a treat to have you both here today. Welcome. Oh, thank thank you. you. Yes, we're excited for this conversation. We love it. We love being raw and real. Whatever needs to come out, we're here to share it with the world. <laughs> Yo, let's dive in deep. Let's start with how did you two first meet? Oh. <laughs> you go. <laughs> <laughs> you go. <laughs> and I'm not going to be too deep because I know people that have seen and heard this because we we share it as like we're really proud of it you know like yeah, you we can really go find a live stream with the two-hour version but here's the, here's the, here's the, here's the, the condensed I version <laughs> i just come out of an intimate relationship so i was when we met the day we met i was about two weeks out of that relationship so i was not looking for a relationship i was on a path of self-healing and i was like you're great but not right now so you can fill in the the other side <laughs> so i've been three years away from a relationship i'm kind of like you know here and there girls here and there kind of open kind of not but really like now it's the goddess now i'm ready you know and i'm done with manifesting the same relationships in my life with different faces but it was the same vibration so i did a lot of internal healing i did a lot of work i saw all my stuff and why i was attracting those kinds of relationships i own it and I started doing deep, deep, deep work. And from there, I was in AFEST actually speaking where we've seen each other there with Mind Valley, right? And I was teaching there actually. And then um, I was surrounded by goddesses because there is the place where all the most beautiful women go, right? And they're all clever and amazing. And so I'm like, oh my God, they're praising me and this and that, you know, they're like putting you in a pedestal. And I'm like, I can't even play around with girls anymore. Like, no, no, it was a no, it was a no. Like a voice deep inside, like the one. And I saw the one from the first day, but she was surrounded by eight to 10 men every time I saw her. So I, it was always like, uh, like I could never reach her. And the last day after the final party, we come 3 a.m. in the morning and to make it short, short, just a really short story, we see each other in the beach, like closing up and we get lost. She's with one man. So that's easy, right? Down to one man. That was, that was, that was a piece of cake. Yeah. And then we just got lost. I didn't know her name. I didn't know. She didn't, we didn't know nothing. We just, just got lost for five hours or something till like 8 a.m. that she left. We saw the sun, sunrise just looking at each other's eyes, doing sound, sound healing, meditation, breathing, just being, yeah. no talk. There wasn't a word in five hours. That's how deep this connection was. And it was from the first time in that moment at the beach, it was really a soul connection. You know, many people might hear the story and think, oh, it's like a sexual connection. Yeah, yeah. You know, you meet someone at a party and you, you know, mm. go into this energy. And it wasn't even that, it was beyond that. It, it had transcended that, it was never that, you know? And it was like this deep soul connection and we could both feel our souls like, dancing and we were breathing and and yeah doing sound healing and getting getting lost in this vortex that we created and then the sun's coming up and i'm like the sun's coming up i don't stay up all night on the beach like what is this right and i realized the time and i realized i had to run a training online at 8 <laughs> 
need to leave. I have to run a training. And I'm, I'm like, bye. And he's like, wait. He's like, what's your name? <laughs> we, we, <laughs> I need your yeah. label to be able to find you again. <laughs> <laughs> you. Like, you have Facebook? Like, what's your name? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's then I did direct me and I was full on and then she came to Costa Rica to a training I was doing actually a lot of A-Facers were coming a lot of people so the same tribe united we had an amazing time she came actually for she was coming for three days she stayed 15 <laughs> and then right after that we just got hooked it was just a yes it's a soul thing you know it was yeah. she had to surrender through it too because it was, she was really pretty fixated that she needed one year of timing, but that got accelerated into one month. It did get accelerated <laughs> into one month. I had a whole plan. I was like, I'm on a self-healing journey and I was serious about it. I married myself. Mm. I went on like a, a self trip to Bali by myself and, and I was doing all this deep inner work to really come back to who is Regan. You know, that was my inquiry. I felt so lost in a way out of coming out of this five year relationship that was really unhealthy in so many ways. And I felt like I didn't even have the space for another human in my life. And so I, I was like, you're great, but not right now. Like I, I need this year, this year. I was fixated on this like 12 months of like self-love for Regan. <laughs> and then, you know, at one point it was like, okay, you know, I've seen all of this. I've gone deep into this. I've seen the vision, my soul knows. And I'm like, am I really going to argue with spirit? Like, am I really going to give spirit a timeline and be mm. like, I am in control of my life. And when am I actually going to surrender to this? You know, so that's when we we went deeper, and and I was like, you know what? Okay, I'm I'm all in. And from that moment, we started traveling the world together, and here we are. <laughs> <laughs> and here we are. <laughs> hey, Four so, years after. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Riggs, I want to ask you a quick question. So, in there, <clears throat> like I noticed for myself in my relationship, isn't it really interesting? Like, did you feel like? what you were just sharing then the, the piece where all of a sudden it's like, Hey, I'm, I'm good. And I'm going to go like, I'm just going to make myself whole, you know, like I know for myself in the past when I was like uh, back way back when I've been in a, in my relationship with my wife now for, for nine years. Um, but prior to that, it was like this journey of like, okay, like this person was like, Oh, a break. I was like, Oh, maybe this person was like a break. I was like, Oh, maybe this person. And I got to a point where I was finally just like, you know what? a little bit of time, no person, <laughs> you know, it's just like a little bit of time, just this person, just, just me, you know, just me. Let's see how that works out. And I genuinely started finding a way to come home. And I'd like to just, yeah, I, it was really interesting for me because as soon as I went on that journey, not too dissimilar to you, I was like, yeah, you know what? I'm just going to be whole by myself. Screw it. I'm just going to do me. And then from there, it was like a month later, it was like, oh, hello. And I met my wife <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> and it was the most bizarre thing, but I know you two do work on helping people call it in, right? Like the energetic signature of when you finally decide that you're whole and then, you know, from that place, like attracting what you're meant to get. Can we have a little chat about that? Yeah, absolutely. I feel it's so, so critical. And, you know, often when people are in this place of looking of maybe it's this person or maybe it's that person or let me date this person or let me that, and they're always trying to look for the person, right? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, even when I was in my, okay, I'm in my bubble, I'm going to be here for a year. Don't even try and pull me out of it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> When I was going through that and going through that deep healing that was required at the time, you know, even prior to entering that, even when I was actually in my last relationship, I hit an endpoint in this last relationship. And, and I, I asked myself, I was like, okay, if I get really real with myself, what do I actually want in relationship? Like if I remove the character, if I stop trying to go, well, maybe he'll become this or we'll change like that. Like if I get myself out of the story and out of the characters, what is it about the relationship? And I got super clear on that. And I wrote it out. I remember this so clearly. I was on a plane. I was flying to Malaysia and I wrote in my journal exactly what I wanted in relationship. I did not write, he should be this tall and this and that and all these things. I wrote all this stuff about relationship. And beyond that, I tapped into the frequency of what that actually feels like. So even when I was in a space of I'm going to heal myself and be in my bubble 
I was still connecting with and clear on, well, when I do go back into relationship, this is what it's going to be like. But it was from a very different place. It wasn't from a character individual place. It was from this vibration of this union that I really wanted to call in. And then it was about three months after we were together, a friend of mine met Wampa and was like, oh my God, you guys, your relationship, Regan, this is everything you wrote down. And I was like, wrote down when? And she, cause I'd shared this with her mm-hmm. and it was everything. Everything we were creating is exactly the relationship. Now, I didn't know that he was going to be from Costa Rica. I didn't know. He was gonna be, <laughs> like, I didn't know he was going to have like Latino fire. Like, I didn't know any of this stuff. Right. I never even asked for that. But what did I ask for? I asked for the frequency of the relationship. So I feel that's a big part of that. And you can't step into that until you're not in this attachment energy of maybe it's this person, maybe it's that, let me look over here, da, 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 cause this is the attachment and the control. So I feel like what you're saying when you release that and you're like, okay, let me just at least get rid of the control. All of a sudden you're in a place of availability. And then if you're mm. clear on what you desire from a frequency level, you can actually start tapping into it. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing that with such eloquence and, and Drumpa, I know a big part of like the work you help with so many of us to do is, is actually center. Right. And kind of what I'm hearing in, in what Regan sharing is like actually coming back to center so that you can meet the other person's center. Right. So then you're actually there like lined up, ready to go. Right. Yes. Yes. For me, it's exactly the same. You know, I, that's what helped me be in my center because Especially as men, we can get so lost with women, right? It's just like, <laughs> yeah, it, it, it just play around. And I've been there and I know how empty that also is. I, I was done. Like I committed. I also did my journaling. I also did. I was doing fully my quantum flow on what I was going to manifest, how I'm going to manifest it. Like it's going to every day I was full on devoted. And that's why when all these women would come, I'm like, no, that's not the vibration. It's not even the person. That's not the vibration I know I'm going to feel. And I, I know it's, it's there. I'm going to recognize it just like that. And with her, it was the moment. It's like, it's you. Like, and it, it's ridiculous. It's like, I don't even know. Look at her. Like, she's 10 men. And I have no mind. And then again, I meet her on the beach when we're almost leaving. And that's where it was the verification where it's a vibration we tapped into just like that so for me it was just a verification on how we are manifestors we are co-creators we are here to really listen if we're open to manifest whatever the universe wants to manifest through us it's not even about us it's not personalized but we gotta surrender and let go of everything we think we know I love that. And so what I'm hearing from both of what you've just shared is, Hey, like conscious relationships don't just start when you meet each other. (laughs) There's there's a pregame (laughs) that you got to go to training, do the warm ups, do all the drills, do all the exercises before you even get come into the dojo. Yeah. Exactly. Absolutely. Yes. That's definitely. Yeah. Any pieces on, um, how do we, like, I know both of you, are. incredibly woven into helping other people manifest the life of their dreams, right? Um, How do we go about from either of you or whichever one wants to jump in on this, like that relationship with trust, like trusting that it's coming, you know, like I'm just going to do my work. I'm going to be whole. And I can hear like some of the people that will be tuning into this is like, yeah, it's all very well and good, but I've still got to put myself out there. I've still got to go look. Um, but how do we actually just trust that actually being whole, being solid, doing the work on myself to be like, these are my expectations, or this is the, this is the frequency that I set for myself. And this is what kind of what I want to attract trust that it's going to be able to come in. Yeah. I think for me, it's even going beyond a vibration of trust, because if you're, if you're in a vibration of trust, then there's almost like the opposites available. There's, there's a, maybe a vibration present in your field where maybe you don't trust in a moment. So if you go deeper into that and you shift that from trust into knowing and you condition yourself to know at the core of your being that this is your destiny and you know that you're totally whole and complete and you know that you're a manifester and you know that the universe is looking to be expressed through you, through love and through union. And if you like know that you know that you know that you know that, you know it will manifest, right? Versus like, okay, I trust it, I trust it, I trust it. Do I trust it? Yeah, I trust it, I trust it. And it's like there's something in that vibration sometimes Mm -hmm. that isn't fully grounded. So I'd invite anyone to to go, you know, maybe from like doubt and skepticism to trust as a stepping stone and then into knowing. And like 
I feel like so much of the work that Wampa does is like the embodiment of the knowing and like getting it in your body and breathing it and materializing it and conditioning yourself to know that you know that you know. Yeah. You know? I know. We know. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's, that's it and I feel a lot of people get lost or in faith you know in religion or in like law of affirmation and like no matter what that's happening but no I am love I am love I manifest they try to kind of almost convince themselves it's all about mindset but when you get it deep in, at a cellular level and at a cellular level you're like I know this as I know the sky is blue right now. As I know that water is flowing, as I know the sun is right there and it's heating my skin. Like I know this. There's no doubt on this that I, I can I can there's 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 not there's nothing at a cellular level is full divine truth. When we can tap into this divine truth, there's no questioning. But that's the work we do. Like a relationship is just an example of how we're living our life is like the biggest reflection of all your belief, all your concepts, all the stuff you haven't worked on, all your fears and doubts, even when you're manifesting it. Because as you're saying, how do I trust that I'm manifesting it? Well, how? Well, how is your work deep inside that you get to that place of knowing that it's just going to happen. This is my soul vibration. This goes beyond my mind. This goes beyond how many books I read or how much I know in, 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 at a wisdom level. We're talking about the vibration of the soul. So the big work, really, the deep work is really, am I tapping into the soul? Am I committed to remembering who I am, what I deserve, what, I, what, that, what kind of life I came here to live? This is just my natural state. It's not outside of me. When I tap into my natural state, this is what I manifest. Like, it is, there's no doubt because I'm tapping into that, right? But it's not about the outside. It's really all about that inner work. So I would just say commit more to that inner work. Go and dig and release those fears, release those doubts. If whatever comes in the way, release that and transform it into this vibration of knowing which comes from the soul. Mm. Thank you so much for sharing that, brother. And the, the the key piece in there that just sort of hooked me was, you know, the, the the mirror conversation, which I'd kind of like to go into, you know, the the relationship is your biggest mirror, you know, and I think for some people, that's a really obvious statement. For some people, that's probably not even part of the conversation. Um, but yeah, the fact that, you know, who we are is reflected in and sometimes like I hear it sometimes in like the most obvious of places like Dr. Phil <laughs> I remember watching Dr. Phil pardon me do you remember Dr. Phil the guy with the must anyway you probably don't even remember him but <laughs> Dr. Phil sitting there he's like I can tell a lot about who you are just by looking at your partner <laughs> and I was just like oh yeah <laughs> and this is like way back when right and but yeah, yeah the, the relationship is such a key mirror, right? And there is so much that we can glean about ourselves from how we show up and how the other person shows up. And so like, like you said, like, oh, okay, when I'm tapped in, this is what I this is what I call in, right? Good, bad, ugly, all the bits and pieces. This is like a re, like a, this is what it reveals to me. This is who I am. And it's such a mm -hmm. such a deep learning. One of the places I wanted to go with that was, you know the relationship with just the blessing perhaps of how it is that, you know, we come to the conversation whole to the best of our ability. Right. But then we still love another. Yeah. And somehow loving another helps us love ourselves more. Like the mirror and the dance between that. Can you tell us a little bit about that? I'm not sure if I've phrased a question. I just sort of made a statement and then asked you to explore it. But <laughs> Yeah. It's definitely a reflection, right? Because you see many times, even when you're in a relationship, it's like, are you really able to receive the love from your partner? And your partner's right there and you can't even see it. Like you're almost rejecting it. It's just a reflection because you're not even taking it in for yourself or you're too much in your mind or you're in your fears. You're not really in that safe place of, you know what? I can open my heart completely, open my arms, and I know I'm safe. Nobody's going to do anything. To me. I can give everything. I can open my wings 100%. And I, this person is like actually going to enhance my flight. 
and my vulnerability, and it's going to help me go even deeper. But for us to feel that, we need to feel safe with ourselves. We need to come out of the fight and flight response. We've been so wired into like, let me protect. Let me run away. That's not, no, 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 no. The world is against me. I got to fight. I got to hustle. It's such a big stuff. We have to wire, rewire again from the moment we're born on like every, someone's going to harm me. There's always something in someone I got to protect all these things, especially now with the news and what's going out. Like you can be harmed in so many ways. We're bringing that. And if you don't work with that, you're going to bring it to your partner. So the first thing you do is look at your fears, look at your doubts, look at your self-love. How do you love yourself? Every part of you. How do you love yourself in the mirror? Also physically, energetically, emotionally, mentally with your thoughts. What kind of thoughts are you letting in? What are you tolerating? Because everything you tolerate in your field for you is what you're going to tolerate from your partner. And if you tolerate yourself like being hard on you and criticizing you and not, you're going to call the same from your partner. Same with love, right? And that's what I feel happens a lot in partners nowadays, you know, like one steps into a higher vibration of love and the other one's like, it's too much. They just can't hold it. So they go into drama almost and they find a way and we've been there to create a drama when we're in the best time ever. We're having the best time. Everything's perfect. And we're like, where did that come from? We can recognize it now. We don't let ourselves, you know, bite the hook but it's so easy to bite the hook and get lost because at the end it's just being scared of being hurt it's just so good that the mind the ego has to find an excuse to suffering to bring somehow the drama into the field and escape from love totally yeah and sir with this mirror and these mirror reflections i really believe honestly that the mirror and divine union is one of the greatest gifts you will ever receive. And if you're someone who is like committed to your own journey and your own evolution and ascension and self mastery, it's one of the most potent tools we've found to actually see yourself and evolve. But with the mirror comes great responsibility. And I also believe that even though the mirror is the greatest gift and you have the capacity to see parts of yourself and, and have these reflections that maybe you couldn't see yourself, but then they're highlighted and brought up and you're like, whoa, that's me. Why is that there? Whoa, that's my mother. And you know, you can go into this work at the same time. If you don't utilize this mirror in a way, the mirror is often the thing that actually crumbles a lot of relationships because the mirror is used in a harmful way the mirror is used in a way where you're so controlling and you're this and you're that and it comes from anger and it comes from judgment and it comes from attack and it comes from from ego defending right versus baby i love you and here's this reflection and when you say that it hurts me and when you go into that pattern i feel this reflection mirror through love you know, mm. that's such a different way to utilize the tool. It's the same tool. It's just being used either through love or through anger and ego or fear and ego, right? Through love or through ego effectively, right? And every relationship has this tool, but it really comes down to how you're consciously or not using it, I feel. Yeah. Mm. Thank you so much for sharing that, both of you. Wow, thank you. And so in that, one of the things that comes up for me is, uh, as male and female, we obviously have our polarities, right? So we are obviously going to be different. Even as individuals, we're going to be different, right? And I love the way you broach that, Regan. It's like, hey, I love you and here's a reflection for you, you know, or, you know, I love you. And and also, and sometimes perhaps there's a moment to even just choose when to share the reflection, right? They're coming from a loving place, <laughs> right? So it's just, just, throw, everything. Yeah. just bring, bring that in there as well. Um, but in that, like the, the point where, okay, there are going to be differences. There are going to be certain points where we're not, you know, like seeing things exactly the same. And I love the way you describe jump. Sometimes like you're, you know, you're vibing all the way up here and the other person's like, Oh, yep, I'm coming with you. But then like the ego sort of goes, Whoa, you know, and, but, and these drama stories sort of, sort of jump in. How do you like, I'll, 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 like maybe let's go with an example. Like, let's say if I personally have um, uh, self-acceptance limitations, right? Like I, I, I can't, like there's certain parts about myself that I can't accept. Yeah. Um, and I'm working on it but I'm also aware that like, you know, like I'm quite judgmental on myself, like my abilities and however they show up. And then 
that projects on me being hard on my partner because then when I see my partner, I'm like, oh, but by the way, you should have done this and you should have done that, you know, and like you end up projecting some of your own stuff on the other person. Now, the dance between the two people, like how do you, I know this is like relationship counseling, what I want to voice now, but like how does the other person sort of navigate that? Like how, do, how, does my, how is my partner supposed to go through and just be like, hey, by the way, that's your own stuff, right? And, or does the other person go, actually, like, I accept where you are and I kind of need to surf my own, like, I'll, I'll accept you for who you are and take on some of your stuff to sort of, you know, accommodate you for the best of your ability. Do you, am I making sense? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, totally. Well, one of the commitments we have in our union and our relationship is that if there's something we want to share or express about the other person or something that's annoying us or this or that, whatever it is, we always talk about ourselves, not about the mm. other person. So for example, if Lampa was like really irritating me for some reason, I wouldn't be like, yo, you're so irritating. What's wrong with you? Why are you doing that? Instead, it would be like, hey, babe, I wanted to let you know, like when you speak in this way, it challenges me because then my experience is this. And when, when you say something like this, it touches something in me, maybe from my childhood, I don't know, but it makes me feel not good and da, da, da. And so all of a sudden he starts to melt and he's like, oh, my intention is not to make you feel not good. And all of a sudden, again, we're shifting and having this conversation through love and vice versa, right? We do this all the time, but see how the ego is so fast to defend. If I was like, why are you da, 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 da? The ego is like, well, this is why. <laughs> and guess what? Yeah. It's going to get stronger now, right? reaction right we can respond or react and when you open your heart and share from a humble space even if you're like angry as she's saying like we deal with it i'm not gonna go into my anger and speak to her from my anger like i'm very conscious i can burn everything around me you know like my fire is so much that i really take care of it because with anyone so i'm very conscious my passion needs to be in the highest, if not, it can burn me and others. So I always take care of me. It's the first principle for me. I know, I know myself. So I go deal with my stuff. Then I come back and it's like, oh, okay, babe, just so you know, this is what I feel, this is what I felt. And I also bring in like, she's saying like, oh, that reminds me like with my father or with my mother or with a past relationship that this used to happen. And I just saw how I still was wired in the same way with the last relationship. I don't know why it's very unconscious but and that that melts each other out but coming from a humble space of like i recognize my own vulnerability when yeah. you come from a vulnerable space it's just magical just the other person even says like oh my god really oh now you're you're showing me this in myself oh my god i could talk, i didn't even recognize that let me upgrade that in my life why was i doing that they question themselves naturally but not because you're questioning them you're just sharing from your heart what your experience was. So it's very beautiful how we indirectly we help each other without touching ego. We're not going through ego. We're going directly from heart to heart. Ego is almost bypassed, you know, yeah. and almost burned because we're not acknowledging ego or responding from ego. And that's the biggest trap I feel in relationships that can help a relationship just burn down just through ego. Mm. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you for sharing that. So it's a, it's basically an inquisition of oneself and then one goes, Hey, like, this is what's coming up for me. Right. And you're sharing that to the other person and the other person then reflecting back. And this is what's coming up for me. Right. And not you're this, you need to that, you need to do this. It's just like, Hey, this is what's there for me. And this is what's there for me. Now that gives both people an opportunity to go, okay, well, you are the way you are the way and you are the way you are, but I want to change or shift or mold and weave a tapestry together. So I'm going to do some work over here on myself around the stuff we just shared. And I'm going to do some stuff on myself around the stuff we just shared. If it feels like the right thing to do. Is that what I'm hearing? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Oh, I love that. I love that. Thank you so much for sharing that. And so in there, like, I'm sure, and don't let me project anything onto you, but there are some, I'm sure there's been some like key challenges that you two probably interface with each other. How does your relationship with forgiveness for one and another sort of weave, like, you know, conflict resolution and forgiveness, are you quick to forgive or do you just hold space for the other person to sort of work through things? Is it probably situation to situation, but forgiveness in the role of a relationship? 
I feel we've up upgraded a lot. We've upgraded a lot on that. We would start yeah. like we didn't start there. <laughs> <laughs> it's sometimes yeah. both very like strong characters, you know, strong personalities, mm -hmm. and and yeah, your ego was touched, your personality, and it was like whatever, like. I mean, my thing, you're in your thing. And, and it was like, until we committed to do the spiritual work, like really that's where the mirror comes in because you commit to do the work with yourself. It's about you, it's not about the other person. So do I want to keep being in my ego, faking nothing's happening and doing my thing very unconsciously, even relating, but there was a little wall there that wouldn't, the heart wasn't really connected. There was still a little- Everything's fine. Everything's, everything's wrong. Fine. Everything's <laughs> I'm fine. I'm just going to be in another room right yeah. now, but don't talk to me. I'm fine. Yeah. Or even go, you know, even like, well, it seemed good in we'll the go outside. Tonight. Everything's fine. <laughs> right? But yeah. And it would take time. And yeah. slowly we saw it. We both recognize the pattern, how we all create different characters because we're both different, but it's the same pattern in a different way. So yes. we nailed it. We saw it. We tagged it. And slowly it started melting down. I would say now it's, it's minutes. We don't even let, it's like a monster that could come in. It's like a cancer, you know, it comes in between you and it could start eating you alive and you start faking that it's not there or you just address it. It's like, oh, oh, what's this? No, this vibration is on our highest. What are we doing about it? Okay. Mm -hmm. And it takes minutes. Like we are not tolerating that between us anymore. No way. Yeah. Clear it. Love. And forgiveness mm -hmm. was a big part of releasing that pattern. You know, yeah. it was a huge part because yeah, if one of us was an ego and not able to get into an energy of forgiveness, then yeah, you stay in the separation. And Juan was right, you know, in the beginning of our relationship, like sometimes the separation will be days, even if it wasn't extreme. But you know, what was crazy is that then eventually at some point we'd come back to love and we'd be like, oh my God, it's so good being in the love vibe. <laughs> Where were we? You know, and we started asking, we like, why did we go here? And then it actually started getting more and more painful. You know, yeah. we'd come back in the love vibe and be like, that separation, that wasn't as easy that time. That hurt me. Like, as you go deeper, it hurt more. And then that's when we're like, why do we keep hurting ourselves? Yeah. And we, we really tapped in that this was this, this deep suffering pattern through humanity coming through both of us looking yeah. to be healed, you know? And it's like, no, like, I don't tolerate that suffering vibe. And that suffering vibe in order to be pushed out of the way and completely dissolved out, required being humble it required forgiveness it required being compassionate it required listening it required saying sorry it required receiving an apology and forgiving you know like these are all things that we intentionally worked on because that was our downfall our downfall was not like i'm gonna yell at you and throw something at you our downfall was like okay everything's fine and now we'll just be separate right like that that was our that was our cancer that was our toxic piece that Took a lot of work, but I feel we, we, we got a lot better. <laughs> and it was so easy. It was so easy because we, we're serving, right? We're serving humanity all the time. So for us, it's so easy it's to work. just get distracted, serving our 1,000 million clients all mm -hmm. over that we're just like, we love it. We love it. So we could get lost. And it's like, the other one doesn't even exist. But then you go at night and you're sleeping with the person and you're like, what is this? I don't even want to sleep in this room. Like, what? It's crazy, but... You, 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 you just get yourself in kind of a trance trying to run away, but there's a moment you just, or you separate for real, or you just face it and see how you can deal with it the fastest way possible. And, and that's, that's where we're at right now. So it's been a big upgrade and we're so feel like really grateful for this because it's not in the field anymore. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's so good and to it, celebrate. And over time, it would be like days of separation, then it would be like one day of separation, then it would be like, you know, half a day, hours, then it would be like a few hours, minutes. and then we're like, now we just catch it. We're like, whoa, we're like, and we feel it in ourselves, like this energy of like, oh, I can't even, I'm going to go, no, 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 we're not. We're going to sit here and look at each other in the eyes, even if it's really uncomfortable and we don't want to, because we're not tolerating the suffering, and that's a choice. Yes. Thank you so much both for sharing that. And that was the kind of segues into one of the questions I was hoping to ask you today. Um, and actually a question emerged that wasn't going to be asked today, but I'm, I'm going to work up the courage to ask you shortly. <laughs> um, so one of the questions that I wanted to ask you was like, obviously you guys share a very intimate, personal, sacred relationship for each other. Right. But then also it is open as we are right now. Right. For, the universe as well to experience to to share and like your your relationship is also available to other people's to i don't want to say peer in on but also share in 
so that, you know, they can learn and love and, you know, there's, there must be a lot of energetics that go into that. You guys are comfortable with that, solid in that. Tell us a little bit about that because perhaps some people are like, you know, this is my relationship and everything else is like other stuff. And this is my relationship. What stays at home stays at home kind of thing. But even in this conversation for those tuning in, like it's pretty amazing just how open we have been in the conversations that we're having, right? Yeah. I feel for us, it, it comes down to service. You know, everything comes down to really being connected to our purpose and our mission. And if we can be vulnerable and share a story around how we like hated each other for two days and if it helps someone, then we're going to share the story, <laughs> you know? So I feel it comes down to that, that deep connection to service. And it also comes because what we have is so solid and it's not solid just by default. It's solid because it's nurtured and it's loved upon. And we both know that our crystal is, is so strong and has so much love and energy and intention poured into it every single day for days and days and days and years and years and years now. We know that because it's so solid that we're not worried to share that because we know that there's no availability for any other energies to even attempt to permeate it or pull it or judge it or try to get in it. None of it. Like none of that's available. And people feel that with us. They feel that with us. Now, again, that took work. We did not start out this way. We had moments, especially in the first year when all of a sudden it's, Wamp was like, why, is, why am I feeling this guy in the field? Like, why am I feeling this friend like trying to connect with you? And I was like, why can I feel this woman here? Like, this feels weird. And the energy was kind of dispersed. And we were aware that our crystal, our core being of our relationship had holes in it, you know? And then we did the work to ground it in and solidify it and we were super present to the fact that if we did want to be beacons of light and really give other people permission to experience through love and and let people pair in and be in and be around us then this was going to have to be rock solid and again that took work that was deep work yeah <laughs> but again it's, it's it's just accelerating your your evolution right that's why the partnership is for like you're like i'm committed to do the work and to really share with love what i feel it wasn't from judgment when i'm telling her like i feel a guy in the field like hey it's okay like can you just see yourself how open are you right now where are you coming what do you feel for that person like you know just really yeah. trusting the person but also speaking without creating a drama and without you're not gonna see them again and you're no no i'm good you can have as much friends as you're you free. can but you're free but then we would question everything and we would always see ourselves and say, yeah, I was kind of open to that person. I couldn't even see that that person had that intention with me. I was kind of naive, so to say, because there wasn't any, we weren't into playing around. We were so in love with each other. We weren't into these games, no, none of us. Like I've been there before and it's like lost of time and energy. We were so committed to each other, but sometimes we wouldn't feel where the other person is coming from. And of course your partner will. So he's being humble enough to say like, oh, you feel that? Okay, let me check in with myself. Let me detach from my relationship with this person and say, where is that person coming from? And usually the other was right. What the other person was feeling, yeah. it was right. So we kind of had to be even more, more connected to our field, as Regan is saying, in order to protect and have other relationships, but knowing that there is a limit and they're not going to permeate. No way. Like this is sacred. They're not coming through. Yeah, and now it's very rare. It basically doesn't have to. Doesn't I can't even, even happen. remember the last time that happened. But it was a thing. It was a thing for a good year or so. And yeah. it was like, why is this happening? And we both wanted to be with each other more than anything. And it's like, whoa, like, why are these people turning up? Like, what is it within me, within Wampa, that's like available on some level, like to, to that energy, even if it is from like an innocent space, you know, because other people can have intentions, but was your intention at the end of the day consciously? And yeah, we, we've done a lot of work to cultivate that. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Thank you so much for sharing that. That's really deep. And I really appreciate you guys going there on that one. So in there, a question that I'm working up the courage to ask you, which came through before it kind of segues perfectly from here. So great trust. <laughs> um, is the conversation around, you know, maybe perhaps I'm, I'm not super dulled into all of the stuff that I'm going to start sharing, but some of the stuff like the age of Aquarius, people are saying it's more of a fluid time, there's more fluidity. And one of the things that I've started to notice just from other people's relationships, not mine, is that this conversation around polygamy has started and people are trying to weave further into polygamous relationships. Um, it 
definitely is not part of my MO. For me, I know that like a commitment to monogamy, that commitment that you make to your partner is a commitment to self in many ways, right? When we're talking about the mirror, but you know, the conversation there, like, like for yourselves where does that sort of where do you sit with that and what is the reasoning behind where you sit with that speak on it that's a big <laughs> one right now it's a big one and i had yeah. to go through it a lot more than regan i feel as a man you know i i had that philosophy i could say even eight years ago you know like i was fully onto it and what i did i humbly surrendered to see where it was coming from i don't judge anyone that's there but i can recognize where it's coming from and it's you definitely maybe have to go through the process it's, it's yeah. all good but i always recommend hey good look deeper look deeper why are you being open to that what i saw in myself and that's all i can speak about is i could see myself running away from my relationship and from stuff i didn't want to see in my reflection it was a runaway mm -hmm. playing around with other people in the name of freedom in the name of when i was really devoted and really committed to like let this work instead of me, you know, running away because we just had something that not talking to each other would could turn into like, oh, let me just go share with my other partner, you know, and like, let me just relieve that. But I never confronted this. And then I come and it's all freedom. You're not going deep, deep, deep into your self love and your self evolution in the fastest way you can. That's what I can say of yeah. like, almost a spiritual distortion mm -hmm. it's almost like a false template of like that's the latest thing that's the biggest thing if you can be free and still love and still yes and no you're not really going deep into your heart and into the depth of the wounds that come up the energies that come up when you're here one-on-one one-on-one -on -one. you're not playing around mm -hmm. is here that's the most intense you can have there's no more distraction so I can say for me, it just didn't work. I tried. I just, I'm just very clear. I know when I'm fooling myself. I know when I'm playing around. I know I could take that for ages, but I'm like, I just want to evolve the fastest way possible. So I'm like, I don't want to lose my time anymore. I didn't play there much, much. So with Regan, it was very clear when we came into, you know, it's like, boom, we know why we're here. We know what's the highest and we're not available for that. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, it is all personal choice. And I think if you're choosing that, then that's cool, but do it from a place of, of awareness and, and seeing if it is an escape route, like Mom is saying, see your pattern. If it is a distraction to actually allowing yourself to go deeper. And if you're on a path of intentional self mastery, if you're on a path of really wanting to shift and evolve, we said earlier in the conversation that we believe that <coughs> this mirror and divine union is one of the most potent tools that you have available in order to evolve right so we do see it as a distortion within the field especially in spiritual communities actually amongst like you know spiritual people like you know you're not woke if, if you're confined and you know you're not woke if you're not free and all these elements right yet we're, we're just not seeing results let me put it this way of people who are in these poly circles or relationships, we're not seeing them as then faster. We're not seeing them wake up and manifest more in their life. Mm. We're not seeing them go into deeper layers of service. If we were, we'd be like, well, let's take a look. Maybe this is working, there's results. We're seeing them dispersed. We're seeing them distracted. We're seeing them running away from themselves. Again, in the name of, of freedom and spirituality a lot of the time. So I think it's a really good thing to question. We're very like you, very rock solid on, on us and what we believe and what we feel. There's absolutely no judgment, but just an invitation of really looking at, you know, where where is it actually coming from? You know, divine union, again, one of the most powerful tools. Why? Because it's a mirror reflection of the divine union in you, your own calibrated masculine and feminine, doing the weave, doing the dance, ascending and spiring faster. And if you can cultivate that within this, I'm yet to see that cultivated through four people or five mm. simultaneously. I just, it's not in the law of nature. <laughs> so that's what I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. As we were sharing that, I was seeing like the DNA helix. And I was like, yeah, there's two strands. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And uh, actually this is going to be a bit off topic, um, but I'm going to go there. Uh, 
I remember listening to there's like these old songs, like old Indian songs. We're talking like Frank Sinatra, but Indian, right? Like, and so I was listening, I remember listening to this one guy and he's a comedian singer from like way back when. And he's really famous because back then no one recorded music. And so basically he, um, he gets married to two people. Right. And he has this second and uh, like he, one lives downstairs, one lives upstairs. And because it's a comedy song, basically he comes home drunk one night and he forgets which, because he, he's got alternating shifts. So he's like one day upstairs, one day downstairs. And then he kind of forgets which way he's meant to go. And then he starts going upstairs and the downstairs lady's like, actually, tonight's my night. And then the, one he, the joke is, one's got me by the hair, one's got me by the ankles. And I'm just getting like roped. And he's talking about how hard it can be to be in two relationships. You might think you want it, but it's actually not. And I, that's kind of what I heard in there as well. It's like dispersing of the energies, right? And I think that's really powerful. And what's really sinking in for me is I guess just an affirmation of my belief that I share with with people when I asked about love and freedom is actually we think that, you know, freedom is, you know, scattered and out there, but really love and freedom are, like you said, two DNA strands, the same helix, right? Like love is freedom and freedom is love. Now in their shadow, freedom is fleeting, right? And love is clingy, right? And that's why you have the, the archetypal sort of woman stays at home, cooks the meals, and then he left me and he, you know, and then he flies and he fleets away. But in its, in its truest honoring of the both, love is freedom. If you can really deepen into that love, the freer you actually will be. But it sounds kind of counterintuitive in a, from a duality perspective. Thank you. And I love that. I, I love what you're saying, just to close this theme, because you're talking about inner freedom when you really find inner freedom and you find that bliss with yourself and with god or this universal consciousness or intelligence you you don't need somebody else you don't even need another partner that's like i, I that, that's an extra for me i'm so in love with life we sometimes stop not making love for one month two months like it doesn't matter there's no attachment to the sexual carnal and it's amazing we can go for hours we can we can <laughs> eight hours, a hundred, a 1000 orgasms. We're tantric, we're, we're fully into it, but we're not attached to it. Right. It's not about it's that. Not from a need space. Not from a need space. Like when you find your own bliss connection with this pulsation, oh my God, this is just the, uh, to support that. So why am I going to go look for some, what for? Am I trying to feel in an emptiness that nobody outside is going to feed it for me? So there's even people doing it, but and they're like, I have no drama. I have no problem. Well, maybe your relationship is very superficial. Maybe, of course, you don't have no drama because you're just like a colleague, like a hummingbird with all these flowers playing around, but there's no depth in any one of them. I don't know. I'm nobody to judge. All I can say, when you find that inner freedom, like really that love for yourself and the universe and this pulsation, oh my God, it's I don't even question the truth of my soul. It's not because it's good or bad. That doesn't even exist. The truth of my soul says, I am devoted to this goddess and to God through this goddess. Like, that's all I know. And that, that's all I want to commit to. And I, that's what I choose to commit to because that's my highest self speaking through. No good or bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing that, brother. I do want to just touch on there gently. Um, just because it would be rude not to, um, even though it may sound rude to go there. Um, some of the work is, that you guys share is around like the, the power of manifestation and one's sexual energy. Um, share with us a little bit what, what goes on in there. Like I know, um, yeah, share, share with us what goes on in there. What well, goes on? It's a lot. <laughs> no, not from that perspective. <laughs> <laughs> the power of sexual energy to help one manifest when manifestation is such a big part of it and consciousness. That, that, that's what manifestation really is. If you look at the energy and if you look at the energetic field and, and, and the spine and the nervous system and what happens, you know, first awakening that energy with yourself. It's yeah. not even with somebody else. We right. all have sexual energy. Sexual energy is a life energy. That's when people get lost, that they think sexually has to do with someone else. It doesn't even have to do with the genitals. Mm -hmm. I've had blasts of sexual energy with no erection. Like that's the real tapping into the depth of sexual energy where it's, there's not even that kind of pleasure. The pleasure is not down there. The pleasure is in every cell of your being. The pleasure is like, kilometers light light years around you that's the real like we're talking the real deal not about like 15 seconds of coming and, and ejaculating and kind of you're done cooked 
<laughs> you know, there's been a misinterpretation of sexual yeah. energy. So when you start tapping into that vibration and you start using it with visualization, with emotion, with intention, with the inner mastery, that that's what all we teach is all about self mastery. You can manifest whatever when it's aligned from your soul using tapping into the sexual energy, not letting it diffuse in the second chakra where you can get lost and be lost with somebody else, but learning how to bring it up into your frontal lobe where that's your crown, it's your connection with the universe, with your electromagnetic frequencies all around you, and that's your field of manifestation. Yeah. So when we tap into the sexual energy and we expand our capacity to manifest our magnetism coming from within, that's when manifestation happens just like that just to summarize but we yeah, do whole workshops sure. and retreats just around this just on that yeah and sexual energy is manifestation energy is creation energy it's life force yeah. energy it's all one right and so when you really get that and you start tapping into you know this energy flow and these rituals um, you can you can manifest um, with yourself and connecting to your vision your dreams but you can also do this consciously in relationship uh, i'll tell you a, a funny story if you thought we were open here we go here's another story <laughs> so, <laughs> it's a good story why do you know the story, you know the story? No, no. you're one you know, <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so when when we first got together we've both been working with sexual energy and manifestation ourselves for, for years for ages right and so when we first started connecting and making love we were both of us without realizing it or without telling each other, we were utilizing the energy for manifestation. And something felt like kind of weird, kind of weird. Like there was for a few months, I was like, oh, when we make love, it's kind of like there's a tiny part of him that's not present with me. And then he was feeling the same thing. And so of course we talked about it and we shared and then we shared like what the experience is and what we go through. And then he was connecting to his visions and I was connecting to my visions. And then I'm uh, like, oh my God, we were like, we, we should be connecting together. Like, <laughs> it's a group mission, you know? <laughs> we were so used to do it. We were so used to just. That it was just yeah. natural. Yeah. But then he's like, oh, we're in the same thing. Because, you know, when you're with a part, it takes more time. Like I usually. We were getting to know each other. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> it's, it's, you respect the timing, right? Yeah. But here it, was, it felt weird because we were both there. So we, we like, just yeah. took it fast. It was like the first month, I think. And then we were yeah. just like flying together in exactly. the same vibration. Yes, and literally now making love will intentionally connect with joint manifestations yeah. that we're Yo, pulling in, but then also like something Wampa's manifesting just for him and his life, something I'm working on myself, and then we'll both put the energy on that. So it's like there are the, this, this pyramid yeah. basically that we work through, and yeah, we, we utilize this energy through the rituals in a really beautiful way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, amazing. So the key thing in there for me is, yeah, like I think the conversation around it, most of it is, hey, like creative energy. Life is a creation. We're all here created. And that energy is fundamental to the tenets of everything, the the fabric that weaves us into, into being. And so, yeah, just learning to, to tap into that. And then when, you know, we are in a creative state or legitimately creating other human beings through the act of, you know, God in us, <laughs> however you want to look at it. Um, it is a really powerful space. Guys, I'm conscious of the time, but one of the things I have to ask you before we go away is how, and this, is, this sounds so lame now that we've gone yeah. so deep, but it's a question I had, so forgive me. <laughs> how do you keep the spark alive? <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> We're just manifesting everything all the time. <laughs> I think you know, in all honesty, I think one of the ways we keep the spark alive is we stay so connected to our purpose and our mission. You know, if one of us is off purpose, that if one is slightly off purpose, that kills my spark. And if he's off purpose, slightly kills his spark and vice versa if it's me, you know. So I think the beauty of what we intentionally create is me centered in my purpose and Wampa centered in his purpose. And then us both intentionally centered in this third being, this joint purpose that we connect to. Many relationships that they, they're either just in their own purpose and they don't have this joint crystal or they disconnect from their purpose and they're only in the relationship. And it's only about the relationship purpose, right? Mm. Which isn't wholeness either. Mm. And so I think for this, like when we're in that, like that creates us spark. Like, I love nothing more than seeing him in his purpose. I love nothing more than us working on our joint purpose. Like it just 
feels so amazing and so good. And yeah, I think from my side, I mean, that, that definitely creates sparks. <laughs> definitely. For me too, and, and owning when you need your space too, you know, when we need, I need to go for a walk, I need to do my own thing, she needs to go somewhere else, even though we don't take that much of that space, but the right moments, the right amounts, in the right place, it's perfect. Great. Cause then like you were like, oh, almost like enjoying and celebrating each other. Cause it can happen that you just get so used to it. We're 24 seven, right? Together, like, and traveling the world, 20 countries a year together, everywhere. Cause it's all, we're speaking in the same places, doing the same retreats, called by the same people. Like usually they call both of us cause they know that, you know, we complement each other really well, but we also have separate things that we work on. So we, we go and offer a lot together. So usually it's all together. So we do need to like how to keep that spark up. And that also helps like, okay, where is that space mm. to really come back to oh, enjoy each other a hundred percent little things, but they're so important. Yeah. I love that. Thank you so much. And uh, just a new question that I've started asking at the end of every podcast is what does inspired evolution mean to you? Either of you, one of you, both of you. Mm. What does it mean? Inspired evolution, I feel for me, it's just natural state. It's the natural state of, of every human being. So if you're not tapping into it, it's just, okay, what do I need to release? What can I choose to release in order to live in inspired evolution? Because life is here to evolve. Like it's the natural state of life. Everywhere you see around, it's always in evolution. Everywhere you go and see life, it's inspiration. Like if you can't tap into inspiration, looking at a sunset, at an animal, at a tree, at a flower, at a, it's like, okay, there's something there that's blocking you. So I would say it's our natural state. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. And yeah, to, to add to that and support that in your natural state, I feel inspired evolution is, is really the surrender and the allowing of spirit to inspire and come through you in order for you to evolve and step in that way, which I think is exactly what you said. So there's mm, another way of saying it. <laughs> Yay. Brother, sister. <laughs> Thank you both so much for your time, your energy, yay, your blessings <laughs> um, here today. And, you know, I can thank you for your presence here today. But as for everyone tuning in, it's, it's abundantly obvious. And I always say this, but it's even more obvious in this space today, Touchwood, just the amount of work that goes into oneself to inform the conversation that we get to have today. And uh, yeah, just really reflecting back to you, just the blessing of just your openness, your vulnerability and how deep we get to go and how much we get to learn from that. So Thank you both for your purpose, your mission, your love for each other, your love for the world and the work that you do as well. So thank you for your blessings. Oh, mm, thank, thank you, you so much. We love you so much. So much. Yes. <laughs> thank you for this. For yeah, everyone. It's been amazing. Thank you. And thank you all for being with us and yeah. going deep into this intimate conversation. Very <laughs> <laughs> and thanks. Intimate inspired. Oh. <laughs> hey guys if you enjoyed this video give it a like leave us a comment and if you want to stay in tune for new episodes launching every monday hit subscribe and i'll see you in the next video stay inspired to evolve